Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Um, just a short video today. I thought we'd uh, have a look, um, or I'd take you around the greenhouse and to show you basically some of the finer details of my setup, uh, how I control uh, the intense sun. It's really hot here today. I mean, it's, are we in September? Not quite, nearly in September, and it's 25 degrees in the shade, so it's about 26, 27 degrees um, out in the sun here. Uh, the greenhouse is about 26 degrees, uh, so it, it was those last few really nice days of summer before uh, inevitably autumn starts to set in and we have to start getting the greenhouse prepared for another cold season. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to look at how we deal with the heat, the humidity and uh, all of those factors you're going to have to um, bear in mind when you're setting up your own greenhouse. So that's what this video is going to be about. One of the first and most important things um, for my greenhouse especially because we're in quite we get a lot of sunlight well the back garden gets a lot of sunlight uh, in the summer it can get really really hot in here and considering this is basically uh, a cell well an insulative plastic box in, in which we have to create uh, a climate which is conducive to the growth of orchids heat is a real real major issue uh, and most most growers will have to deal with this in one way or another in winter it's too cold uh, so you're constantly battling the heat and in summer it's too hot so you're trying to cool the greenhouse and the growing space down and one of the most important things that i use is this material this reflective material this is called xls fire break uh, it was quite expensive i was given this actually to be honest and uh, i've cut it to size just so it fits over like panels over the greenhouse uh, and it's got aluminium foil reflective strips inside it which help to reflect the light uh, and it reflects about they think this is an 80 percent or a 70 percent shade cloth i can't actually remember but the aluminium strips are really really good because they bounce a lot of that light and therefore a lot of the heat back away from the greenhouse so this is probably one of the most instrumental features of the greenhouse uh, in controlling the climate inside so uh, if you're in north america or in australia you can get um, uh, a similar type of material which is um, called Aluminet, I think it is, which is same thing again, it's, it's sort of woven aluminium fibers into a sheet and it, it does the same sort of thing. So uh, this stuff's really, really difficult to get hold of in the UK, uh, unless you're basically a commercial uh, greenhouse. Um, there's a, are some companies that supply it. So uh, I don't know what we're gonna do when, uh, when this stuff rots and disappears. It's, it's basically polyester. So it will last for quite a long time, but it won't last indefinitely. So at some point we're gonna need to replace it. So. Um, uh, and so yeah, I've, I've cut into panels uh, and I can also control, if I pick you guys up, where I can see you, here it is up on the roof, it also goes over the vents, that's that little square up there, and I can peg it up uh, to let more light in or, uh, or obviously restrict light and there's another section of it down here which doubles up and can be folded up against the side of the greenhouse. So uh, that's my shade cloth. Okay. So here we are inside the greenhouse. Uh, so this is the opposite uh, side of the spectrum, really. We've been outside, we've had a look at the shade cloth, um, and you can probably already notice the, uh, a, a really definitive uh, change in light levels. It's much darker in here. I've never used a light meter, so I've never found out how many foot candles we're sort of you know, exposed to in here. But um, the greenhouse, say, the, the plants which are growing in here do really, really well and they stay a nice grassy green colour rather than going purple. So we know we're getting at the approximately the right amount of light. The carnivorous plants on the other hand, the uh, shade cloths roll back so they get a lot more light and then the penthes are backed off just a little bit further beyond that so they don't get quite as much light either. So since we've been talking about um, heat control, um, primarily I think we'll have a look at those items that I use to control the internal climate basically. So, but a look at the shade cloth on the outside. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at um, all my automatic vents because I've got I've only got two in here, um, but the way they are orientated uh, is instrumental to maintaining uh, the climate as best as I possibly can in here. So I'll pick you guys up. And we'll have a little look what's up here. Okay, so sorry for the slightly weird angle for filming, but this is just the best way for you guys to see what it is I'm talking about and also probably view my nostril hair, so I apologise for that. Up here behind me, this is the only vent I use in the greenhouse, okay, that's in the ceiling. So this is, the, the greenhouse came with four vents. This is the only one that I ever need to open despite it being like 35 degrees outside. It still doesn't get any hotter than about 27 degrees in here. So this is, a, uh, it's got a, a piece of fly screen over it, which I've just pegged in place using the same attachments I would use for putting, um, bubble wrap on the inside of the greenhouse 
uh, and it's got a wax filled cylinder and it's on springs and it starts opening about 25 degrees centigrade so uh, about 25 this thing will be open letting air circulate uh, or will vent out of the greenhouse so it's keeping it cooler those pockets of hot air aren't building up in the ridge of the roof line which is really helping to maintain um, maintain temperature in here okay so please excuse the relatively unusual angle and location at which this is being filmed you're actually lying on top of my swamp core at the moment looking down the back this is the where it sucks in air at the back and blows it out the front and what we're actually looking at there and this to, just to the right of shot is the wax filled cylinder which opens a louvre vent uh, which has got six blades in it which opens and close according to temperature obviously the hotter it is in here the wax expands opens this vent uh, and allows air to be drawn in by the swamp cooler which is then blown you passed over evaporative pads and blown around the inside of the greenhouse so that's the second of the only that's the last second and only vent that's actually open in the greenhouse regardless of what the weather is doing. Okay, so I'm gonna have to speak up a little bit for this because I'm right next to the swamp cooler, which is running great guns at the moment. Now what this device does is it takes water, it's got a reservoir on the bottom here, you fill it up there, add normal tap water, um, you could put RO water in there if you wanted to. It goes into a reservoir which is in the bottom here and it's got a pump. What it does is it pumps that water up and over a set of uh, like porous pads at the back, in front of those pads, or this side, or the exit side, it's got a very strong pump or a, a, a fan which draws air in through the back where you were just looking in that last shot, sucks it in through the back, through the louvre vent, passes it through the pads, which have then causes some of the water to evaporate, which then cools the air as it passes through it. And then it blows it out the front at some quite force. I mean, you can probably see my shirt waving around in here. Um, so it, it, it creates a lot of air circulation. Basically, all the orchids are always moving in here uh, with cool, um, humid air, because of course, as part of the evaporative process, it actually picks up quite a lot of moisture with it as well. So it helps to maintain relative humidity in the greenhouse. This is basically the beating heart of my greenhouse. If it wasn't for this, the climate in here would just be too hot. I wouldn't be able to control it to the degree where actually it would be okay for the orchids to grow in. So this is probably the most important thing I've got in the greenhouse. and. Uh, it works so well. Another beauty about these as well over an air conditioner is um, it uses hardly any electricity, although it's quite a powerful blower, as opposed to the thousands of watts you need to run a um, air conditioner, this thing uses about 250, which is not very much. It's still a lot, um, you know, but it's the, the, the best of a bad situation, really. This will, this provides me with what I need to basically run the greenhouse. So this is this is the most important thing and I got this, this was a yard sale basically or I got it offline and uh, paid next and I actually got two of these so I robbed the bits that I needed, any spare bits for this and just kept this one so I've got quite a few spares for it in case anything goes wrong. Okay so some of you may ask why so few vents in the greenhouse and I'll explain that to you now you see. The reason I've got I've got four vents, okay, because I wasn't sure how things were going to end up being orientated around the greenhouse, first of all, so that gave me a degree of flexibility. Now, as previously discussed, we've got the, um, what's this thing called? Swamp cooler, which is sucking in, cooling and humidifying air, and it's blowing that air in to the greenhouse in this direction, okay. So, if I had a vent open above your heads, because you guys are right at the front entrance of the greenhouse, now there's two vents directly above the camera where you guys are, so if I have one of those vents open, all that's happening is that cool, humid air is coming in the greenhouse like this and then blowing out because it will just rise because the heat rises, it rise and disappear out the top of that vent over there, which is going to be okay, but it's not going to cool the greenhouse for any length of time. It's not going to keep that cold air in. But it's just going to be sucking in one end and blowing straight out the other side. So you're going to get pockets of heat building up. So what I did was I placed the automatic vent over on this side because my, the, my theory is that if this is sucking cold humid air in, it's blowing it in this way, in towards you, circulating in this whole area at this side of the greenhouse where it's nice and cool and humid, and then that hot air which is rising and accumulating is being vented out from here, so it's creating a vortex, so it's coming in like this, going up around the greenhouse and then eventually disappearing off out of here, so it's keeping it cooler and more humid for longer. So that's why it's orientated over on this side of the greenhouse and towards the back near the swamp cooler. Now, to further ensure that there's 
optimum air circulation. So we're making sure that humid air isn't being stagnant. It's moving around the greenhouse, moving past the orchids all the time. We've got an oscillating fan, which I've actually turned off. I'll just turn that back on again. This guy, this guy sits up here. It's just a normal pedestal van, so a rotating pedestal van. All I've done is mount it uh, onto a little bracket I've put up on the ceiling in the eaves up there. Uh, so you can still articulate it, you can point it up and down, so it's blowing the air around, keep making sure it's moving as well. And that's one of two, well technically there's three fans in here, so we're going to have a quick look at those now. Uh, it's not particularly interesting, I'll pick you guys up so you can see. Uh, we'll have a look at those and uh, I'll discuss why they are located where they actually are. Okay, so the first one is this little tiny pedestal fan over here, it's just a little desktop fan, and that's mounted down low and it swings from left to right and it's underneath the benches. Because my fear was what I didn't want was stagnant air building up underneath there and the other side. So we've got air moving on top of the plants and below the plants. And I'm starting to put racking in underneath here now. Anyway, so we're gonna be making more use of this grow space. On the other side of the greenhouse, over here, we've got my very, 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 very old but yet lovingly restored heater. Okay, just zoom in so we can see it. There it is. Sorry about that. Just move around in front so you can see me. Now this thing's pretty old. This was made in the 1990s uh, in a little place called Limington. Um, and it's a Hotbox Elite. It's got a series of um, like uh, hob cooking electric elements inside it which heat up on a thermostat. Uh, and there's a big fan behind it which is uh, a long life fan which blows air through it. So it's circulating in from behind and blowing it out so we've got more air being circulated this way uh, and it's on a thermostat so it hardly ever turns on apart from at night when it get, if it does get really really cold it will then turn on uh, so that's the three fans which are going constantly in here all the time uh, because obviously the um, swamp cooler is on a, uh, here on a thermostat as well so that only comes on at 25 degrees about the same time that the uh, vents should all be open and it, they work really really well together so as soon as that one's open the louvre vents open at which point the swamp coiler comes on and then as things cold, cool down during the evening everything shuts back down and closes up so uh, that's the heating taken care of let's move on to the humidity well apart from the swamp cooler which i've already discussed at some length okay so we've seen the beating heart of the greenhouse that being the swamp cooler over here this is the brain center this is really this is like the, the nucleus of the, of the greenhouse this is where uh, the electricity comes into the greenhouse where it's distributed to all the component parts of the greenhouse which I use to do control you know, the climate control and also where all the humidity is controlled. Um, there's a thermostat inside this box, this is like a sprash proof box, the uh, front just slides off of it which allows access to plug sockets in there. Um, there's a thermostat in there which you can't see from that angle but there's a living earth electronic habistat cool control and that's controlling the swamp cooler. Over here is, this is the control that's actually turned off at the moment because otherwise you'll be getting loads and loads and loads of very, very fine mist pours out of the ceiling uh, of the greenhouse to keep the humidity up. Uh, and this is a hygrostat and a thermometer. This is part of the misking um, system which I use. There are, if you scroll back through my list of videos, you will find uh, some videos of me actually setting this up. It's actually still got the plastic cover on it, which I might actually treat myself and just that was very satisfying. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Oh, lovely. And uh, so this is basically set um, to control the humidity in the greenhouse. It's controlled at 75% humidity all the time, all year round, that's uh, during the day. Uh, and then at night it's set for 85% relative humidity. So if for some reason it's quite a dry, hot evening, it'll stay on for longer. It's six, it comes on at six o'clock. It'll come on for longer and it'll raise that humidity right the way up to 85%. So that's really, really good. The, the orchids absolutely love it and so does the Nepenthe. So it's always really, really humid in here. Never drops below 75. Uh, well, I'll tell a lie, actually, there's a 1% um, allowable drop in it. So it's allowed to drop down to 74. As soon as it hits 74, that's when the humidity system comes back on again. The pump kicks in, uh, which is fed by the uh, bucket, which is near the pedestal fan below me. That's full of RO water. Uh, it pumps that water up and it comes up through the lines above us through these nozzles which if, if I turn you around you might be able to see them as well. There's not going to be too much backlighting up there so we can scroll up. Going up, up there. I'll zoom in, it's going to be centre of shot. 
bear with me. Okay, it's not going to be centre of a shot, it's going to be near the centre of a shot. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. There's a black nozzle up there which is kind of pointing down. If I point to it, it might make it more apparent. Now this here, this is a, an adjustable nozzle and it produces, um, uh, I think it's 250 microns or something like that. It's super fine mist. So this, there's three of them in the roof and this is the misting system. So when it comes on, lots of mist pours out of this and then the circulating fans blows it around and it all goes over the orchids, evaporates, adds humidity to the, um, to the atmosphere, evaporates on the surface of the leaves so it cools the plants down and, um, and it, it just, just helps create that perfect growing environment. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed that. That's given you a bit of an insight into how I control the uh, climate inside the greenhouse uh, and my grow space. And uh, most of you can see oh, I'm very happy with the way the orchids are growing in here. They seem to like it. So we must be doing something right. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in uh, for another edition of Oliver's Greenhouse coming to you soon.